Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube. And today I want to do a slightly different video and talk to you guys about my favorite automations to use in the Apple Home app. Now these are all automations I use every single day and ones that I've been kind of working on and tweaking over a few years. And it basically means whether it's a smart lock or a smart bulb or a plug or whatever, I can get everything to work together. And this is where automations are great because not only can you control other devices based on the state of other devices, but you can control whole groups of different devices from different manufacturers at once. And for that reason, I'm going to talk about using this with the Apple Home app in this video. Pretty much every product I'm talking about in this video, I do have a review for, so make sure you browse through my other videos in order to find those reviews if you want to. I'll also put some links below where you can purchase some of the devices I'm talking about. So let's get straight into it and talk about my five favorite tips for home automations. And tip one is get everything into one app if you can. Now, most devices, when you buy them, do typically have their own app. So if you buy a Nuki smart lock, it will have the Nuki app to go with it. And for the most part, you are going to need these individual apps in order to tweak more advanced settings. However, for your day to day controls, you want to try and get them into one place, such as the Apple Home app. Of course, that'll differ if you use Google or Alexa a lot. But for me, that's Apple Home, so that's what I'm going to talk about. And all of this is getting easier thanks to Massa because we're seeing more and more compatible products that you can get into the Apple Home app. And with iOS 18, we're seeing Apple support things like robot vacuums as well. And having everything in the Apple Home app makes it really easy to create automations for all of those devices together and group things together around my house. For the odd device you can't get into Apple Home, perhaps for more advanced users, you might want to look at something like Homebridge for Raspberry Pi. For example, Tour products are a great example of where you might need to get something into the Apple Home app that isn't natively compatible. So that's my first tip, get everything into one app if you can. So let's get a bit more specific. And tip two is where I want to talk about using smart locks with home automations. And I've talked about this before on this channel, but Apple classes smart locks quite rightly as security devices. The slightly frustrating thing is that it doesn't determine between the security of locking or unlocking. For example, personally, I'd say locking your door is not a big security thing. It's just something you want to happen, whereas unlocking potentially is. What that means is if you have a location-based automation that says when the last person leaves, lock your door, you'll actually get a prompt to manually run this. This means for the Apple Home app, you can't automatically lock or unlock your door using an automation based on your location. A great way around this is to have something in your house that you want on when you're at home and off when you leave, and then to use this to trigger your lock. This could be a smart plug, this could be a device you automatically have on when you're at home and off when you're not, or for more advanced users, it could be a dummy switch using that Raspberry Pi and Homebridge. Whichever approach you take, you're gonna need three automations to achieve this. And this will let you achieve automatic locking of your front door when you leave. So step one is you wanna create an automation that says when the last person leaves, turn off that device that you want off when you're not at home. So your smart plug or dummy switch or light or whatever. Step two, you want to create an automation based on the behavior of that thing in step one. So you want to create an automation that says when your dummy switch or light or smart plug turns off, lock your front door. And then you want to create one final automation that kind of resets all of this. This makes sure everything is ready for the next time. So basically you want to create an automation that says when the door unlocks, turn this device back on again. This will enable you to have auto locking of your door when the last person leaves without having to give permission because this will just run automatically. I've been using this for a year and it works every single time. And I love this automation because it means I don't have to worry about locking my front door when I leave. I just lift up my handle and walk away. And this leads nicely onto tip three, which is to utilize those when the last person leaves and first person arrives automations in the Apple Home app. And this is where the Apple Home app is really clever because you can add multiple people to your Apple household. This means you can do automations based on when a first person arrives home and when the last person leaves. This makes these automations better than a lot of geolocation features in individual manufacturers' apps. And that's because it behaves based on a group of people and not just one. So my last person leaves automation makes sure that all of the lights are off, my speakers are off, and that my door locks itself thanks to that tip in tip two. This means I'm not wasting money on running things when I'm not at home, and I make sure my door is locked. It also switches off the privacy mode on my indoor camera so I know what's going on at home via a feed. My first person arrives automation kicks in during the evenings. And basically it puts on a light when the first person gets home. That means there's always a bit of light as soon as you get back so you can see what you're doing, especially useful if your light switch is on the other side of the room. And then tip four is to create automations based on the behavior of other devices. Now tip two when I talked about doing something based on your lock unlocking is a good example of this, but another example is motion sensors. 
and that's because you can turn on devices when they detect motion. But I do have some other setup that might be really useful for you. So one of these is if my fire alarm goes off, all of the lights in my house turn on. This is a great extra way of making sure if that was to go off, everyone would be guaranteed to be woken up. Another example is my record player where I have a contact sensor on it. That means when I lift the lid, it turns on some lights and also sets my speakers and power up for a record player. A third example is that when my kitchen humidity sensor reaches a certain level, it will turn on my kitchen extractor fan. And so those are just a few ways you can trigger other devices based on the state of other devices. These are really useful for automating a lot of stuff around your home. Another way of automating stuff around your home is on tip five, which is to create automations based on the time of day. For example, if you are generally a creature of habit, then set up an automation that makes sure all the lights in your house are off after a particular time. You can also tie some extra things into this, like making sure your smart lock is locked using that trick in tip two, or maybe that some smart plugs are off as well, so I've got one to make sure my speakers aren't left on overnight. This is a great way of making sure you're not wasting money on stuff when you're not gonna be using it. A slight word of warning with that one is that if you break your habit or arrive home at a wrong time, you will find yourself being plunged into darkness. I've learned that myself. Likewise, I also use automations to open and close my blinds and curtains based on times of day. So they open at a certain time of the morning and then they close at sunset. This is thanks to the SwitchBot blind tilts and curtain rod threes. Not only does this save you a job of having to go around your house and doing that, but it also means it looks like someone's at home when you're away. Although it also looks like something out of House of Wax. And there you have it. Those are my top five tips for using smart home automations with the Apple Home app. And for me, the Apple Home app is a great way of having everything in one place and being able to tie things into each other. It means I don't have lots of apps with different automations set up, I just have everything in one place. That's with the exception of a few Siri shortcuts. And for the most part, all of the things I've talked about in this video just run every day behind the scenes and they save me time and effort and I think they're great. And for me, that's great because smart home devices are about simplifying things and automating parts of your life. Let me know below what your favorite automations are or any things you think I should try out as well. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you guys again soon.